sun has just come up and we're camp dry camping, boondocking east of Tom's Place in the Eastern Sierras. This is our last campsite of the trip. Um, we're heading home probably tomorrow unless we decide we, can, we want to stay another night. It's been really beautiful here. There are um, lots of volcanic rock. Here's um, and some evidence of Indian settlement. Here's the dirt road. We brought the trailer up <clears throat> that branched off from the main road. It's not too bad. Um, and we're kind of here at a three-way junction. Here's one road. And here's another one. <laughs> and we thought, oh, this will be pretty remote, you know, but actually we've We've had a couple people come driving by. It's been okay, but it's just the feeling is more of a, this is not a totally private space right here. It's very quiet here right now. You wouldn't know. Last night, it was so windy. Just whistling through the various cracks in the A-liner. This morning, we woke up and it was 31 inside, which, you know, we've had 27 on this trip. So it was, I guess, relatively warm, but we immediately had to, you know, turn on the, crank up the cook stove. And this will be our third night at this site tonight. Um, we had been planning on going back to the very scenic site, which was east of June Lake, but we had to choose a different place because the, of the a huge controlled burn that was going on over there, blowing the smoke to the east would have been all over the area where we would we wanted to camp. I'm not sure if I remember to mention um, exactly how we're keeping Little Biscuit here warm at night when it gets down to 27. Um, we've got this old bedspread and his bed and everything, but we've also got this little electric dog heater pad that he's sleeping on. And we also bought him this, this um, little outfit here. It's kind of a winter slick at the exterior and then it's fuzzy on the inside and we just put it on him with without doing the underside and it seems to trap the heat in and keep him pretty warm there were some nights when it was so <laughs> he was so hot in the middle of the night we'd hear him panting away and we'd have to come come out and give him a little water how do you take a shower when you can't use your hot water heater or your main water tanks here's some tips we used a three gallon stock pot from walmart not very expensive. You overheat the water just a little bit because it's going to cool off while you're taking the shower. Get one of these battery operated shower pump thingies or get a 12 volt version. Um, you stick, stick, the, stick this part in the bucket and push the button and then it sprays very very nicely. We recommend timing the amount of time it takes and the amount of water you're using to wash your hair one time while at home and then you can estimate how much water you're going to need for the trip because uh, washing my hair anyway t takes a lot of water so um, like for us I think we estimated 10 gallons a day for two people um, with me washing my hair about every other day. Here's the Thetford toilet and shower enclosure that came with our A-liner. Um, the shower curtain was supposed to hang from the ceiling, but we're abandoning that because of the way the walls slide over these straps. So we're going to hang our shower curtain from the walls and put a pole across a tension rod. Another recommendation is the Camco step cover to keep control of the dirt inside. Here's the coupler lock that we purchased, and it's convenient because you can key it to match the key to your car. Cooking! What did we do? I really don't like to cook, but I will say we enjoyed using this Dutch oven. It takes a long time to cook something in the, at high altitude, but um, we had a great dinner one night with uh, chicken quarters, and I highly recommend this. If you're going to use a Dutch oven, this made such a difference. It was so much easier to clean up afterwards. The chicken didn't stick to the pan. Um, we just threw the chicken in there with some Italian seasoning, oil, and salt and pepper, and some onion powder. Boy, 
it was delicious. Just have to remember to cook it longer at high altitude. And some other recipes we've always enjoyed camping have been, of course, spaghetti and then um, Near East rice pilaf with canned chicken is another one that usually tastes pretty good at the end of a long day. I know I've kind of made comments about the lack of storage in the A-liner, but this cabinet right here to the left of the door, um, and again we have the LXE model, um, right under the chair, one of the chairs, um, was great for pots and pans and also I recommend buying this non-skid non stuff shelf liner keeping it around the pots to keep them from uh, banging around quite so much on the road in there and maybe forcing the door open. Here's the seat before getting out the pots and pans. What did we do for entertainment? This is it. No streaming for us. Haven't quite figured that one out yet. Maybe on the next trip. There were a few bars of cell phone reception in a lot of places. Um, not sure how well it would have worked out with, with the streaming. I bought uh, the complete series, one through four or five, on eBay, and it was pretty reasonable. So what are the, some of the things um, we really like about the A-liner? in this trip context and what are some of the things we'd really like to fix for the next trip because <laughs> this is our very first time with any kind of a trailer and any kind of off-road camping and any kind of off-road driving <laughs> so um, we really love the A-liner for the like I mentioned the king-size bed that we created is so comfortable I can't believe how comfortable the foam cushions are for us. Um, they're they're firm. They're not memory foam, but we've been warm. Um, there's just a plywood base underneath, and and I don't know. It's been the warmest and most comfortable we've ever been. And you know, we've done a lot of car camping and tent camping in the past, so we love that. Um, we love the fact that it's not too hard to take it out on these dirt roads. We haven't tried a lot of really rocky, pitted you know, roads with streams running out the road. We, we're probably not into trying that right now. Um, and we kind of like to think that it maybe was easier to drive the A-liner over these roads than if we'd had a conventional trailer, because we did look at a lot of conventional trailers. Um, we looked at vans. <laughs> okay, item number two. It takes us too long to pack up and get on the road and to unpack and get to a campsite. I mean, there's also the time involved in finding campsites. That, you know, on this kind of camping, I think next time we do a trip, we're gonna spend a lot more time at home doing research on where we wanna go and where would be good to go. I just really think we need to work on organizing our stuff. Our stuff is, uh, you know, we've got, because of the A-liner being not very big, Inside we have to put like we decided to put all of our food practically Except for what's in the refrigerator in the back of the car Thought I'd bring my piano and my husband brought his guitar and we've got Several suitcases because we thought a big one would take up too much room and and then we've got a lot of stuff that we have to put in the a-liner when we're on the road because we can't fit it in the car like the recliners and the solar. So there's just a lot of packing and putting stuff away and then um, you know it ends up taking us right now about an hour just to get on the road and then another hour to unpack and spread out the rug. <laughs> so that's something I think we're going to really be thinking outside the box. One thing that would have saved us a lot of time and energy and, and anguish on the trip would be if we had not brought our small dog Biscuit He's a 15-year-old pug dog and has trouble regulating his temperature like all pug dogs do. He's totally deaf. He, we can't leave him outside at any time. He would be coyote food. It had just always been one of my goals to bring the dog and, on the camping trip. But, um, and we saved a lot of money in dog boarding over a two-week trip. But, you know, I think it was, it was a source of big anxiety when we'd go on a hike. Um, you know, we just weren't sure if someone was going to try to break into the trailer and do something to him. 
in the future we're going to have to think long and hard about about whether to bring biscuit on our trips. They've said that the controller for the solar panel needs to be near the battery. As you can see in our setup here, we've got a long cable, which is great. We can place the solar panel anywhere we want, but the controller happens to be on the back of the suitcase. Um, that's the way it came. So we need to figure, figure out a new setup for the controller. And also we'd like to put another solar panel on top of that front dormer. Another thing we need to figure out um, for the next trip is some kind of a outdoor reading working area. Um, it's fine lying on the bed working in some ways, but ergonomically it's really not the greatest for your back. Actually, ironically, the recliners that we ended up buying have turned out to be very comfortable. Here, I've got one set up. I don't know if you can see it just sitting in this tent, but anyway, they are, it turns out they're great for working. In this kind of environment here, you really can't plan on having a screen room right off the outside of the trailer because there's all these sage brush you have to park in between. And this is the second campsite we've been at where the rug almost didn't even fit. We had to figure out how to position the trailer so we could even get out the door. So um, it's going to have to be a separate structure for us um, getting out away from the bugs, being able to work on some of the hobbies that we have. If you bring a dog, make sure you keep him hydrated. Maybe mix a little bit of extra water in with his food. Another big issue um, that we need to remember next time and take more seriously is chapped hands. Once you get big cuts on the tips of your fingers, like I did, you don't want to pick anything up and you can't do much with your hands and then it also hurts when you're trying to sleep. It's amazing how much it hurts. Um, and I think the reason it got started with me was that I was washing my hands every other second. Uh, every time I got some dust on them, which was all the time, it's very dusty out here. Using some Neosporin and some Band-Aids on the cuts and locking that down all night with, uh, you know, letting it heal, it finally got better. And luckily it didn't happen to my husband, so he could still lift things and um, take care of all the things that needed to be done around here. This is the Thetford cassette toilet enclosure that comes, you know, with the trailer. And you can see it just keeps getting occupied by bags and trash. We can't put the trash on the ground, number one, because of the dog, but also because there's just, there's just no room on the floor for anything. So we need to figure out, you know, a better way to hang up our bags or have a shelf for our bags. We're kind of discouraged from even taking showers right now um, with it, so that's a bad thing because then we start feeling dirty and kind of crabby. Here's the area I just worked over with our Home Depot broom from the trailer. I think it looks a lot better. It used to have tire tracks all over it. Um, even before we got here, there were someone had driven over here, so it looks a lot better. Obviously, there have been people here in the past, a long time ago. This has been actually one of the cleanest campsites we've, or out in the middle of nowhere, that we've run into. Another uh, item that, that we'd like to improve upon, but we're not sure how to do it quite yet, is um, how to do the dishes. This is basically our method for doing the dishes. We, we don't want any food material going down the drain here to attract bears or other animals, and we try to wipe all of it all the food out of the pots and after we've moistened them we wipe it out throw the paper towels in this trash bag down here and uh, it just takes a long time it's very laborious um, you know there is some soapy water then we, we then we go and use the soapy water to clean whatever else is left in the pot out um, and we end up dumping that in a deep hole somewhere around the campsite and covering it up but um, kind of wish we had a, a little bit better method for, for doing the cooking and clean, cleaning up after dinner. Maybe we'll start using more tin foil containers, but then that increases our amount of trash. Um, we've had a lot of trash in the back of the car. <laughs> so um, it's just a matter of volume, really. It doesn't smell or make a mess because the kitchen trash bags don't leak, it seems like. But um, anyway. Not sure how to deal with this issue quite yet. The refrigerator that came with the trailer is a Dometic three-way, three-cubic-foot refrigerator. Um, here we are at 7,400 
feet elevation and everywhere we've been so far on this trip in the eastern Sierras above 5,000 feet it's it seems to have been working with the exception of the first campground where it was really wheezing it couldn't seem to <laughs> there was a loud fan noise it couldn't seem to cool things off very well um, right now in here it's you know last night as I mentioned it was uh, 31 when we woke up in the morning we have it on level 2 um, it seems to still be functioning. I don't know. There were reports on online that the propane wouldn't work at high elevation. I don't know. It seems to be working for us right now. Um, the inside temperature is, you know, below the critical range. Like, you know, it's below 40. We also have one of these little fans that we purchased to uh, help with the cooling inside. It seems to be... I'm not sure if it works or not because we've never tried it without it, but... Um, it's been going the whole trip. We've been gone for two weeks. It hasn't run out of battery power yet. So, you know, this has been pretty good. I'd say it's, uh, we also have a reserve cooler in the car. Um, the only thing that's broken on this already is the door latch. So you can just pull it open, if, but it hasn't been an issue on the road when we're in transit because we put a whole bunch of stuff here, in, you know, like recliners and stuff that keeps the door shut. We climbed up the hill at the top of our campsite and I thought I'd show you the view. Trailer down there. Either out or some beetles are getting to these some of these trees. This ridge, there's this beautiful gray granite, randomly tossed boulders. Down where we were camping, there's the volcanic red rock right down there, very close by. It's very sad to see these trees dying. And the thing that's scary is that, you know, I'm not a naturalist, but they all have, a lot of them have needles still attached, but they're all brown as if they just suddenly died. <laughs> 